Bien sûr. Of course. It's about that. But we have an elephant's memory. We don't forget the slightest word. Do you remember when the French soldiers began to leave our territory? When the French ambassador Sylvanité thought that colonization was still ongoing and that he could challenge the new authorities and we showed him the door despite his mentor Macron claiming under every roof that Ite was accredited to Niger with Bazoum, not to the Republic of Niger, but to Bazoum, and for them, Bazoum is the president. He ended up leaving. After his departure, a French intelligence agent, a former DGSE operative, a certain Vincent Cruet, openly stated that this was an opportunity after the withdrawal of their forces and the departure of Sylvain Ité to destabilize Niger through clandestine actions. We did not take these words lightly and no statement should be taken lightly. Moreover, he was only repeating what he had heard from his masters, particularly President Macron, who had already initiated in the first half of August 2023 a wide consultation to provide an appropriate corrective response to the Nigerian people and the case of Niger. Following this, he gave instructions to a certain Jean-Marie Bockel, supposedly Macron's Africa advisor, to find urgent solutions so that the Niger case does not set a precedent. After several months, nearly a year of study, this led to the infamous African Command, which is the result of their new invention to bring the states of Francophone Africa in line, with Niger at the forefront for daring to demand its sovereignty. The African Command is a disguised version of the troops we have expelled, as it is a command that will be implemented with a certain reorganization. Specifically, the troops in Chad, particularly in N'Djamena, will be reduced to 350 men. The troops currently in Gabon, around 4,100, will be reduced to about 100. The Ivorian troops will be maintained. They said they have about 600 men. That's their problem. They will maintain them. They will create two senior commands, one based in Dakar, Senegal, and the other in Libreville, Gabon. The difference to deceive the Africans will lie in the command, who will be designated, which will no longer be chiefs coming from the metropolis, but rather defense attaches who will ensure the command. And through this, a chief of staff named Pascal Yan has been designated and on September 4th of this year the command will be operational with a deployment of 50 to 60 men 
which will increase to 100 or 150 men, with a discrete command, because it will be handled by the defence attachés already present at the embassies, of course, the French embassies. Of course, it's certainly not the case with Niger, and it certainly does not avoid the case of Niger. Therefore, this sick desire to destabilize Niger has spread through the repositioning of all the French DGSE agents we have expelled from our territory. They have been repositioned in Benin. I say it and I repeat it. They have been repositioned in Nigeria. You know the famous Thomas Guglioso, who was the level two station chief here in Niamey, who was only perceived as the security chief of the embassy. He is a French DGSE agent. And what I'm saying is a fact. I will give you a bit of his biography. He was born on July 7, 1974, in Paris, 18th arrondissement. He holds a PhD in law after completing a diploma of advanced studies in comparative law. This guy held the position of level two station chief at Niamey, and he is not the only one. Others we have expelled from the airbase have found themselves, as I said, in Benin and Nigeria. Thomas's case is verifiable. He joined Nigeria in February of this year. He is currently in Abuja, regularly moving between Kaduna and Sokoto. We are monitoring him and all the other fugitives who are hiding in their village of Minister's Hills in Abuja. We are monitoring them and they should be assured that the dark plans they are plotting for Niger will, God willing, backfire on them. This intention of destabilization is certain. The French, disengaging from Niger, have done everything to ensure that they do not leave through Benin, because we know the malicious and malevolent spirit of the French. We demanded that they exit through Chad. What did they do? The first to leave made an appointment with Boko Haram and ISWAP terrorists who are two rival factions in the Lake Chad Basin. This happened between October 25 and 26, 2023. They proposed to these terrorists to wage an open war against the Nigerian state, against the new Nigerian authorities who dared to ask the French soldiers to leave their territory. They did not stop there. God is with the righteous. Boko Haram and ISWAP did not agree, and God willing, they will never agree. They repeated the same maneuver on the night of January 10, 11, 2024, when they again delivered military equipment via two helicopters to Boko Haram terrorists who seemed more inclined to accept the French troops' proposals. This happened in Kulawa, an island in Lake Chad, about 25 kilometers east-northeast of Bosso. Later, on January 29th, they returned this time to Butungur, an island about 10 kilometers northeast of Bosso, where 
where they delivered brand new weapons to Boko Haram terrorists. And they recovered the old AK-47s that these terrorists were equipped with. They took measures to erase the serial numbers so that the origin of these weapons could not be traced. These are the kinds of actions that the French have taken and continue to take. We know they have supporters hiding in our cities, here in Niamey, as well as in Agadez, in Maradi, and a little bit everywhere. But they should know that we are monitoring them and their supporters should be warned once and for all. We are following them and at the right moment we will act. We have understood their trap through certain non-governmental organizations, through certain security companies. We have put an end to it. And since they are unlimited in imagination when it comes to causing harm, we will be more imaginative in protecting our country. What they wish for Niger through their exchanges, their correspondences, their calls with their supporters, their intentions will not succeed. I want to tell you something even more serious. France, on June 16th, exactly, circulated through its intelligence services, elements of the DGSE, who are in Benin, circulated the information that Westerners had been kidnapped with their guides in the W Park in Benin. But the W Park in Benin is in the hands of the French. The W Park is in the hands of the French. The DGSE intelligence services are inside the park. We know the activities they are engaged in and the Westerners they announced to have been kidnapped are a Canadian and a Dane. We know that it is false. First of all, it is not the terrorists' modus operandi. When the terrorists take hostages, they keep everyone. Of course, through negotiations, they release those who are burdensome. That's not what happened with this hostage-taking. They released the Beninese guides and kept the two hostages, so to speak. But we know that they are not hostages. They are specialists in explosives, in guerrilla tactics and in jungle warfare. These people were taken to the base at Fada, where the Emir Alia Sir Mahmoud was located. They trained these terrorists in the use of improvised explosive devices, in guerrilla tactics, in intelligence gathering techniques. After this base, a certain Jules Habu and Sambo Doctoro left with a Toyota Land Cruiser to pick up these two specialists to take them to another location between the village of Boulel and Bukasi. For those who know this area, it is inside Burkina Faso. These people were still in this position as of July 15th and they are continuing to train the terrorists even though the French have portrayed them as being kidnapped by terrorists. So, 
Who are the real terrorists? This is to give you an idea. Many more acts like this have taken place. We have evidence, not only vocal evidence, but also written evidence to support what we are saying. France is behind this terrorism that is causing grief to Nigerian families. This is a parenthesis. And at the right moment, we are ready to present all the evidence for what we are currently saying. So, this desire for destabilization, Nigerians must understand, is real. There is nothing imaginary about it. It is a will. And France, through its current authorities, will not hesitate to act once Nigerians have lowered their guard. We will not lower our guard. Niger will stand tall, God willing.